All right, we're going to go over a little introductory into Git Cool and how to use it to uh, evaluate system performance. And we're going to make sure we turn down the thermostat. We're going to open up some doors and close the screens to get a little bit of a heat load on the house while we're doing our testing. I'm going to go ahead and pull the electrical disconnect after we made sure the unit's running. And we're going to record some information about the unit, like the model number, serial number, indoor evaporator coil numbers, and then we're going to go ahead and remove the panels. So we get the panels removed to get the gain access to the electrical, we're going to go ahead and attach our gauges. The 556 attaches just like a standard set of gauges. Connect the blue line to the suction line. We're going to go ahead and connect the red line to the liquid line. We're going to go ahead and install two clamps to measure both liquid temperature and suction line temperature. Pull back the installation slightly to make sure we get good contact with the copper pipe. We're going to plug the two jacks into the meter. They're keyed so you really can't get the direction mixed up. And after we get them in, we're going to go ahead and press the menu key and it's going to search for all the probes attached to the instrument. We'll scroll through and make sure the probes are reading properly. And after we get that done, we're going to, go ahead and restart the system. While it's running, we're going to go ahead and get good cool started. I've gone ahead and inserted a site, and the site's Jim Bergman, so I'll select that site and press the select key. And it comes up with a name and address, and I'm going to go ahead and say next. And we're going to go ahead and select the unit, which I've gone ahead and put in. Select. I'm going to do a refrigeration test. So, first thing we want to do is get data out of the 556. So the unit's been running for about five to 10 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and press the print key and the data is gonna stream via IR right into the palm. So now no technician can manipulate this data. After we get the data into the palm, we're gonna go ahead and get the outdoor air temperature and we're gonna put that into the palm. We're gonna go ahead and hit and see our preliminary results. You can see there's a warning screen and we're gonna go ahead and continue. And the reason there's a warning is because our superheat is down at 0.5, which means that we have none. We have a, everything else looks normal except for the subcooling, which appears to be high. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna check the airflow and we're gonna see if in true, in fact, it is a charge or an airflow problem. We're gonna drill two holes in the duct. We're going to use a Testo 416 vein anemometer to measure the airflow. Slowly withdraw the probe. And our airflow is 1203. It's a three ton system, so the airflow is perfect. So we know we got a charge problem. We're going to go ahead and recover some of the gas out of the system. Okay, now we have the superheat under control. We're going to go ahead and we're going to restream data back into the palm, the new data, so we can reevaluate operation of the system. And we'll hold it over, press the print key, data goes in, and technician can't manipulate it. I'm going to get the electrical measurements. These are each measured to ground, so 117, 119, and we're going to put those in. After we get the electrical voltage in, we're going to go ahead and measure current. And we're going to put the current into the palm as well. Again, each leg is measured independently. And we do this so we can calculate the wattage of power consumed by the condenser. So now we're taking the electrical measurements for the evaporator fan, and we're taking the current for the evaporator fan, 4.2. We're going to go ahead and put that into the palm, along with the return air, wet bulb, and dry bulb and supply air, dry bulb, and wet bulb. Now all the data is input into the palm, return air, supply air, after we get this data in, we're going to go ahead and push the result key. Now you can see evaporator temp, superheat, condensing temp over ambient, subcooling and approach are all on target. 
our airflow, we're going to go ahead and input it to 1203.7 and hit electrical again to go to the next screen. We're going to skip that because we have it all in. You can see that our compressor is operating at about 98.9% .9 of its rate of capacity. We go ahead and enter airflow results. Our sensible split target was 19 and we're at 20.5 so that's green and we're good to go there. Our coil sensible capacity was at 25,360, our latent at 12,397, and our total capacity at 37,757. It's a three ton unit, so it's a nominal 36,000 BTUs, so we're actually a little over capacity and right on target. Our coil tons is 3.1, our sensible heat ratio 0.67, our bypass factor 0.3, our CFM per ton is 383, so we're gonna go ahead and save this. And after we save it, we're going to save it as a final test, hit OK, and we're done.